You're in. With Tony Broom Ministries. The session starts this time with Pastor Broom talking about the thief on the cross who was saved. As the dialogue and praise continues, it leads into the sermon entitled, He Never Lost One. Get ready to be blessed and encouraged as we join Pastor Tony now. He said, Lord, be merciful to me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus said, I'll do better than that. Today, you'll be with me in paradise. Today. He didn't even let him wait till his body got cold. Hey! He just said, today, you'll be with me in paradise. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You think you ask him for something that's impossible, and he said, I'll do better than that. I'm the God of the impossible. Yes. Jesus will outshine the sun. He is greater than what I could ever imagine he could be. No one of the scriptures said, unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could even ask or think. Some of us have a big imagination. We can ask and think some big things, but whatever we ask and think, it doesn't mean that everything we can think up and ask that he'll do. It just says he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we would ask or think. He is always able to do more. And when you think that he's done all he can do, he's just now getting started. He is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we would ask or think. I was thinking about this wonderful Savior of what kind of God He is. He is the captain of the captains. He is the Lord of Sabaoth. He is El Elyon. He is the Most High God. He is Jehovah Shammah, who is always there. He is Jehovah Yare, the one who sees and the one who provides. He is Jehovah, my shepherd. He is Jehovah Sidkenu, the righteousness of His people. He is Jehovah, everything that I need Him to be. He is the I am that I am. He's the only one who has never lost one. He's never lost one. We lose sometimes. We don't like to lose. We don't even like to lose a sport, much less in the kingdom of God. And yet here's one who never lost one. He never lost a battle. He never lost an argument. He never lost a debate. He never lost anything. I'd like to have that kind of man to lead me. Somebody who never lost anything. He never lost one soul. Now there are many lost souls in the world. There are many lost souls who have already gone to hell. There are many lost souls who if they don't get right with God will continue to go to hell. But they're not lost because He lost them. They're lost because they're lost. Because they've not come to Him yet. Jesus has never lost one soul. Not one has He ever lost. That's a good God. That's a good Savior. He's never lost a soul. He prayed in John chapter 17. This high priestly prayer. He was getting ready to go to the cross and He talked to His Father. He had to make sure that his disciples that he left in the world would be okay. He wants us to be okay. He wants us to be more than okay, but he wants to know that you're going to be all right. He didn't leave you as an orphan. Lord have mercy. He didn't leave you by yourself. He didn't leave you to fend for yourself. He didn't leave you on your own. He did leave the world, but he sent somebody back. To take his place. He sent somebody as a paracleton. He sent somebody back to be the comforter. He sent somebody back to help you, to guide you, to lead you. The Holy Spirit. He sent the Holy Spirit so you would not be by yourself. Don't you dare think you're alone as a Christian. Don't you dare think you're alone just because your wife or your husband has died. Just because your children have moved out. Don't you think you're by yourself because you're not by yourself. You don't have to have four hound dogs and a goat in the yard to know you ain't by yourself. Jesus Christ is with you. God the Father is with you. God the Holy Ghost is with you. You're not by yourself. 
John chapter 17, he prayed for his disciples. He said, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name, in verse 12. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Amen. That word kept. I have kept them in your name. I have kept them in the way they should live. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. The Father's name. We hear a lot about Jesus' name. But here he's glorifying the Father's name. He said, I have kept them in your name. And none of them is lost. Except the son of perdition. There's only two times in the scripture that refers to the son of perdition. At least two cases. One of them is Judas Iscariot. He was referred to as the son of perdition. Is also the Antichrist is referred to as the son of perdition. He's referred to as that lowest thing that you could be, the son of perdition. And Jesus said the only reason that he's lost is so the scripture can be fulfilled. Somebody had to take that place. But it didn't have to be Judas. Judas had a choice. He could have chosen right. But he chose wrong. Jesus didn't lose Judas. Judas lost Jesus. He might have thought he knew where he was. He told those soldiers, he said, You just follow me and when I get in the garden where he is, I'll show you where he is. And when I kiss him, you can take him away. What a traitor. You're talking about a scriptural Benedict Arnold. You got one. But Jesus didn't lose Judas. Judas lost Jesus. He might have known where he was physically in the garden, but he lost him that night because he gave his soul to the devil. But it wasn't Jesus' fault. And I want you to know, brothers and sisters, I stand flat-footed on this floor today, and I want you to know that every soul who has gone away from God, who has backslidden on God, who has turned their back on God. Jesus didn't lose them. They lost Him. Amen. It's not Jesus' fault. It's their fault. We can't blame our demise on the Son of God. We can blame our demise on the devil who comes to kill and steal and to destroy. That's preaching if I must say so myself. Jesus didn't lose Judas. Judas lost Jesus. But there's never a soul that Jesus lost. That is a pretty good record. He never lost a soul. You want to be saved today? You can come to Him and He won't lose you. It's possible for you to turn your back on Him and be lost. But He will not lose you. You will have to lose Him. You will have to voluntarily walk away from Him. He will not lose you. He never lost one soul. He never lost in the sickness department. Matthew chapter 4 verse 23 and 24. Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Amen. You'll notice that word all keeps coming up. All. All means for you all, you all. All. He healed all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. He didn't lose one sickness. His fame went throughout all Syria and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments and those which were possessed with devils and those which were lunatic and those that had the palsy and he healed them. You find all kind of sickness and disease that is mentioned in this list. All kind of sickness. Every kind of thing you can think of. But I don't care what you can think of. They have diseases now they haven't even named yet. But nothing catches the Son of God by surprise. You can take some of the diseases that we talk about here in these two verses. Lunatic, palsy, all divers diseases. You got to watch those divers' diseases. Sometimes they dive up to the mountain, they dive down to the beach, they dive out the back door. 
All them kind of divers diseases, you know. But he healed people of divers or different kind of diseases. Some of them are not even named. But none of them catches the Son of God by surprise. You go to the doctor and they say, Mr. Smith, I uh, want you to know that your condition is a heart condition. So therefore, we have to refer you to a cardiologist. Now we have a good one here and you don't have to worry. I think he can fix you right up. Miss Jones, your condition has to do with cancer. Now don't be afraid, baby. I know that's a bad word. But we feel like we've got it under control. We can treat it. You'll be comfortable. You won't have too many days of discomfort. But in order to do that, we've got to send you to a cancer doctor. All kind of specialists. They have to send them to a certain kind of doctor. Oncologist. Cardiologist. All these different things that are named. Specialists. But with Jesus, you didn't have to say, well, wait a minute. Jesus can't handle this. We've got to send you over there to somebody else. There was no sickness he didn't handle. You didn't have to have another specialist. When you came to Jesus, you came to the right dentist. You came to the right heart doctor. You came to the right cancer doctor. When you came to Jesus, you came to one who can open blind eyes, who can raise the dead and cause the deaf to hear and the mute to talk. When you came to Jesus, you came to the right one. Matthew chapter 8, verse 16 and 17. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. It fulfilled scripture. When Jesus healed the sick, it fulfilled the word of God in Isaiah chapter 53. And not only did it fulfill the Word of God, but those who are suffering the conditions they had, it helped them to be well. That's two main reasons that Jesus did what He did. He did what He did because it fulfilled the Word of God and also made the people there better. He cares about the eternal scope of God's Word and He also cares about the situation you have right there at your hand right now. They brought to Him many that were possessed with devils. And he healed them. He cast out the spirits with his word. The word of God has a power to cast out the evil powers of hell. To heal all that were sick. Filling Isaiah's prophecy. Saying in fulfillment himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Matthew chapter 9 verse 35. Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. There was not a sickness he could not handle. It wasn't the kind of situation that you have right now where sometimes the doctor says we've done all we can do. There's nothing else we can do. They may even say we've never seen this kind of condition like this before. We've never seen the blood count do this before. We've never quite encountered this situation before. But Jesus didn't care whether he had encountered that situation before or not. Because he was just as comfortable as having encountered it for the first time as to have, having encountered it for the 10,000th time. It didn't matter with him. He healed every sickness and every disease among the people. He never lost one soul. He never lost one sickness. Now I know that God takes His people and calls His people home. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of His saints. He calls His children home. But there's another side of that 50 cent piece you need to look at. Because sometimes people are taken out of this life not necessarily because God just calls him home. But that evil one comes to kill and steal and to destroy. And I don't know why and I don't know how he has been given so much leadway to do what he does. I think a lot of times it's not that God gives him so much leadway. I believe we give him too much leadway. He come on in here and taking our loved ones out. He thinks he's going to kill them. And he might physically. But God says, you might can kill them, but I got them. they in my arms. There's no sickness that Jesus 
could not handle. There are sicknesses that the doctor can't handle. There are people who go in the hospital and you think they're going to get well, and they are getting well, they are getting better, but all of a sudden, boom, they're gone. I don't understand it. I thank God for this church. And I don't mind telling you, they, they pay me a little something, all right? But they don't pay me enough to understand that. Nobody gets paid enough to understand that. I don't understand. But we'll understand it better by and by. By that time gets here, we ain't going to care about it. I ain't going to sit him down beside him and tell him all my troubles. Because when I sit down beside him, I ain't going to have no troubles. That's a good old double negative too. No sickness. He could not handle. He didn't lose one. There was no one who came to him that didn't get better. And that tells me if I know the nature of my Savior Jesus Christ, I'm not blotting myself, I'm not putting a blight on the church, I'm not putting anybody down in the Mill Hill Expression, I'm not dogging anybody, but I just want to preach the truth. The truth is if Jesus Christ walked into this flat ground family life center this morning, He would not leave out of here and nobody not be better. He would not leave you like you came in Jesus' name. Cool. Praise God. Shalom, Mahara. Oh, somebody. It's about time for a praise break. Glory to God. He won't leave you like He found you. If He found you blind, you could see before He left out. If He found you lame, you could walk before He left out. If he found you and you couldn't hear and you couldn't talk, you could hear and talk by the time he left out. I'm just talking about knowing Jesus. I've known him for over 50 years. I think I know him enough to know why and how he would do. If he came in here physically like he did on the shores of Galilee, he would not leave you sick. I'm telling you, he wouldn't do it. So that tells me that it's God's will for his people not to lay around sick and tired and tired of being sick, sick of being tired all the time. God wants us to be well. He wants us to be all we can be for Him. I know there are precious saints of God that are bound to their bed this morning, and I'm not blighting anybody. I'm just saying I will stand before God to preach the truth of God's Word, and the truth of God's Word said He will not leave them that way when He finds them that way. Jesus Christ would come in that bedroom right there where my, one of our precious pastor's wife is this morning and is bedridden. Jesus would come in that room and if he was here in the flesh, he would come in that room and he would heal her and raise her up by the power of God. I know he would. That's the Savior I serve. He didn't walk around Galilee and say, oh, Father, this is bad. But I, I, I tell you what, we can't do nothing about this one. He never did. There was never a situation he ran across that he couldn't fix. You find places in Matthew chapter 11, verses 5 and 6. It says the blind receive their sight and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them. If you look at that, it's six things. Six is the number of man, man's number. That's why in that mark of the beast, six, six, six. It's all about man, all about evil, all about beast. That six. But if you look at that scripture, blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, dead are raised up, the poor have the gospel preached to them. That tells me that all of mankind's need, Jesus Christ can meet every need that mankind ever has. Amen. Blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Chapter 12, the last part of verse 15. Great multitudes followed him and he healed them all. There was never a situation that came, not only sicknesses that he could handle, but whatever the situation was, it never baffled him. It never bothered him or buckled him. People in this town used to get their knees treated by a man named Dr. Buckle. I had one person laugh. The rest of you ain't got this yet. 
Why do I want to go to a man that's going to make my knees buckle? Is Dr. Buckle? That's about as bad as buying insurance from a man and said, cheat them, cheat them, boys, cheat them, cheat them, cheat them. And cheat them to start with. I'm not making any f fun of anyone's name. Nobody worse than a broomstick. I mean, you know, <laughs> straw in the broom, whatever. I, there was never a situation that he couldn't handle. Chapter 15, verse 30 and 31. Great multitudes came unto him, having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. Insomuch that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb to speak, the maimed to behold, the lame to walk, and the blind to see, and they glorified the God of Israel. Tells me that every situation that he was faced with, he didn't have to go back. And look at the physician's desk reference. He didn't have to go back and look in the encyclopedia. He didn't have to call up heaven and say, Father, give me a Google reference on this. Whatever situation came to him, he just took care of it. One thing that bothers me about church now is that Everybody has to check in. Oh, that's not my job. You're going to have to go to Brother Scott. You're going to have to go to Brother Jim. You don't have to go to Sister Sally. That's their department. Who cares about whose department? If you've got a need, take care of it. Somebody's sick, don't wait for the preacher. Your hand's closer to him than he is. You lay hands on the sick. You speak the Word of God. What if they get saved and they want to be baptized? You baptize them. Preach it right with God. He'll put His blessing on it. I guarantee told you, knowing our lead pastor as good as I do, if people started getting saved and getting right with God, you would baptize the people, He would put a hallelujah right over your head. He wouldn't care about it. It wouldn't take any glory away from Him because He don't have any glory anyway. The glory is given to Jesus Christ. The multitude started glorifying God when they saw the maimed to behold, the blind to see, the deaf to hear, the lame to walk. They glorified the God of Israel. Every situation he handled. Luke chapter 4 verse 40. Now when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with diverse diseases brought them unto him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. This is an individuality. Now there are many times when Jesus just healed the multitudes. It didn't say that he touched them. He spoke the word of God and they were healed. And there are times like this in Luke chapter 4 where it says he laid his hands on every one of them. There is a teaching in here that suggests to me that some will be healed and some will not be healed. Not because it's God's will or not. It's because somebody gets touched and somebody don't get touched. What if there are those who we could lay our hands on and they would get better but if we don't lay our hands on them, they won't get better. And you say, well, God can heal them. Yes, it's God who heals them. He can just heal them out of heaven. That's not the way He chose to do it. That's right. That's right. He didn't say, I'll just heal them out of heaven with a cloud. He said, you lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Thank you, Jesus. Well, you say, well, I've tried that. It didn't work. Don't you never say it didn't work. God's Word always works. God's Word works. we the ones that ain't working. You don't believe people ain't working? Go out here in the restaurant, go out here to the store, go out here uptown, try to get you some business done, see how hard it is to get anything done because people are not doing anything. Amen. Churches, Amen. slack, lack, lazy, yes. lazadaisical, whatever, it's because people don't want to do anything. Their hands are getting weary. They might get weary, but all you got to do is rub them together and get a little fire going. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. He laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. There was no situation that he couldn't handle. Amen. Devils also came out of many crying out and saying, Thou art Christ, the Son of God. And he rebuking them suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was Christ. Whatever the situation was at hand, whatever the circumstance called for, Jesus was up to the task. He was always in charge. Do you know that even when they tried him, even when they put him on the cross, he was still in charge? He said, no man takes my life from me. I have the power to 
lay it down and I have the power to take it back again. Glory to God, what a Savior I love. He's in charge. He never pushed His weight, but He always executed, operated in, and worked with power and authority. He said all authority, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. He didn't go around pushing His weight and say, I'm the Son of God, you get out of my way. He just operated in the power of God. Operated in authority. I love this verse. Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. That's the kind of Savior I serve. The one who never lost a soul. The one who never lost a sickness. The one who never lost in any situation. He was always in charge. He was always on top. He was always knowing where he was and who he was. Where he came from and where he was going. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He never lost one. Father, I thank You that we serve such a Savior. I thank You, Lord, that You love us today. God, You have given us this opportunity to be encouraged from God's Word. To realize that the things that are going wrong in this world, it's not Your fault. It's not the Word of God's fault. It may be our fault. It may not be. We're just living in a fallen world. But You have never lost one soul. You have never lost in one sickness. You never lost when it came to the waiting room, when it came to the doctor's office. You never lost when the baby cried in fever at night. You never lost one. You never lost in any situation. No matter how hard, no matter how hopeless it seems to be in this world, you never lost in any of those. I thank you, Lord, that we serve a Savior who's never lost one. And I pray today that many would come to Him as Savior and Lord, worship Him and praise Him and give Him glory this day in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It has been our joy to have you listen to this sermon called, He Never Lost One. You can rest assured that if you give your heart and life to Jesus Christ, He has the power to save and keep you too. This has been a Tony Broom Ministries production.